Last time. BB Bap. An exotic pressure test. A short. It looks amazing. Brought out the best in Sean. That makes me so happy. <laughs> but for Diamond. Wow. The results were hard to stomach. Diamond looks like puke. Ending her Master Chef journey. Sorry. Say goodbye to Diamond. Tonight. That is a chef's dream. A high-end mystery box Woo! takes the competition to a whole new level. This is Master Chef cooking at its absolute best. And then, damn it, all right. For the top nine, Ew. it's sink or swim. There's no ocean in Kentucky, and only the sharpest home cooks will survive. It's definitely one of the worst. You're a talented cook, but it's dreadful. to show the judges what I can do, and my confidence is, is wavering. Come on in and get to your stations. I really got to step it up and create something amazing just to show myself that I still belong here and I have what it takes. Welcome back to the Mouse Kitchen. <laughs> You're all experiencing an incredible opportunity throughout this competition to learn from not only Christina and I, but some of the best chefs in the world today. And now we have another phenomenal chef and guest judge to introduce. Who is it? Joining us in the Master Chef Kitchen is the owner of a highly respected culinary empire. Yay. Having won accolades in some of the biggest and best known cooking competitions in the world. Please welcome. Ooh. Here we go. Chef Kevin Sprague, I'd like to have a look. Oh, oh, good good to see. Master Chef Kitchen. Chef Kevin forever. He's a high-end chef, one of the best in the country. Welcome to Master Kitchen. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I appreciate it. Wow. This little Mississippi girl doesn't know a lot about super high-end foods, but I'm like a sponge. I'm gonna absorb everything from Chef Kevin. For those that haven't been to your restaurants, give me a little insight. What do they like? My food is a refined American food. It's all about the ingredients for me. And I can't wait to see what all of you home cooks can do. Now, it's time for your next big mystery box challenge. Kevin, would you like to do the honor? On the count of three. One, two, three, lift. Whoa. Fine dining ingredients. Ooh. Nice. When I lift the mystery box, I see a mystery. There are a lot of items here that, unfortunately, I have never really dealt with before. Yeah, okay. Christina and I personally selected all of the ingredients in your Mr. Box tonight. You have baby octopus, black cards, lamb belly, squash blossoms, heirloom tomatoes, garlic butts, vintage red wine. That there is a chef's dream. Finally, a high-end box. I mean, this box is my dream box. I am excited like a kid in a candy store right now. The person with the best dish in this mystery box challenge will win a huge advantage. Kevin, since it's your first night inside the MasterChef kitchen, may I invite you to participate in your first mystery box? With those ingredients? Absolutely, I'd love to. This is a big one. Kevin Sprague will be cooking live in front of you guys. You're going to have 60 minutes to make us one spectacular dish. Your 60 minutes starts... Now! Wow, what a mystery box. Have we gone too far too soon in the top nine? We are trying to push them more into that fine dining space and out of the ingredient comfort zone that some of them are living in. Where am I going to put this sucker? What I want to see is them being a little bit more daredevil. These ingredients are never used before. That was really our motivation for bringing Chef Kevin in at this point. What a huge inspiration for him to be cooking in front of the top nine. Woo! Tongue here. Kevin, all good? All good, Chef. What's the dish, please? An octopus salad, ram belly, and then tandoori cod. Nice. I'm actually doing three dishes. Three. I've got to show them what I can do. These are definitely not ingredients that you're used to seeing in a firehouse kitchen. That's a damn sure. Want to make hand seared and baked cod with a parsley cream sauce, uh, watermelon radish salad. I'm definitely going to keep my eye on uh, Chef Kevin up there. I want to see what techniques he's using. You know, take a little something from him. My husband and I love um, having a date night and going out to eat. So I've definitely been around high end food a lot. So I'm going to do lamb belly with some Indian spice. And I'm going to use the eggplant. I'm going to make a chickpea puree. I want to 
to bring a fine dining experience to the three judges today. 20 minutes gone, guys. 40 minutes remaining. Smells good. Tell me about this. What are you doing? Just going to make a, uh, a tenderly spiced black cod over a tomato and squash blossom salad. You look down. What's the matter with you? A rough last time in the kitchen. Do you have any idea how many rough nights I've had in the kitchen? I don't feel I'm good enough, to be honest. Oh, come on. So your head's got to get in that game. And if we didn't see that potential, you, you would have gone weeks ago. And that's not the case. Yeah? Come on, get that head up. We'll come back strong. Okay? Come on. All right, Sean. What direction do you think you're going to go tonight? What do we got working here? Um, I'm about to cook off this cod a little bit and see how it looks with a red wine braised lamb belly with a puree of four different greens. This is stuff I do all the time. High-end fine dining. In my opinion, this is your challenge to win. But there's talent in here. Just because I'm the high-end guy, these guys can pull off some amazing dishes. Thank you, Chef. Just put those in there and see what happens. Nice. Randy, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, actually. What's the dish? What are you doing? Um, I actually made a cod uh, with the little bit tandoori spices, braised octopus, and a play on a hummus with the fresh chickpeas, and I stuffed the squash blossoms with it. This mystery box has nothing to do with me, because I don't have these ingredients in Kentucky. What's the fanciest restaurant in your hometown? We only have one restaurant. In There's only one restaurant in the whole town? I don't have a stoplight in my town. We only have two in the whole county. What about electricity? I do have electricity, thank you very just, much. Just ask it. Electricity, plumbing, heat. <laughs> <laughs> you ask. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Too much oil. All right, Terry. Yes, hi, Chef. What are you cooking tonight? Tonight, I'm going to cook a grilled cod with a grilled octopus on a bed of quinoa. How much exposure have you had to fine dining restaurants? I have had some exposure, but not too much. How are you imagining the dish that you're cooking tonight? Pictures, things that I've read, places that I've gone virtually. And... Imagine that dish. Fine dining is all about, like, taking a snapshot because it's just so beautiful. Yes, yeah, Chef. Get it. Guys, yeah, 50 minutes gone. 10 minutes away from a game-changing advantage. Right. Yes. I am loving this challenge. The big shot for me tonight is Brandy Musk. She's making fresh hummus with chickpeas. Oh my god. She's cooking on pure instinct. David, now he's going down the cod route, but I'm hoping, having spent the last 60 minutes opposite Kevin, it can lift him. David, you alright over there? Not really, but I'm trying. Come on, dude. Just go with it. Don't overthink it. 60 seconds to go, guys. And for one of you, one minute away from receiving a game-changing advantage. 30 seconds remaining. So hard. A picture on a plate. Let's go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop. Hands in the air. Woo! High-end, fine-dining, restaurant-quality dish is what we're looking for tonight. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. One hand stop, hands in the air. Well done. Woo! Kevin, you good? I'm good, I'm doing great. Kevin, please, bring your dishes up. <laughs> so, describe those dishes. Uh, so my first dish is a red wine braised octopus, piri piri sauce, tomatoes and garbanzo beans. The middle dish, braised lamb belly. Underneath is a charred eggplant. On top, roasted mushrooms. And then the last dish is a tandoori cod. Underneath, tomato marmalade and shaved radish. Chef Kevin, really? I'm looking at your three beautiful dishes tonight. You can just see the flavor bursting out of each dish. That's beautiful. I'm so inspired by everything he does. It's just ignited this passion in me. The fascinating thing for me, Kevin, is the harmony. The balance of textures are a great job. Tell you what, guys, I'm not sure I'd want to follow Chef Kevin's three dishes. Time to take a much closer look at those finished plates. Good. Throughout the Mystery Box Challenge, the judges taste elements of all the home cooks' dishes as they come together. Dude, that's beautiful. Thank you, sir. They now take one final look to choose the top three standouts, and the winner of this challenge will receive a major advantage in the next round. The first dish we'd like to take a much closer look at. This individual created a plate that is both beautiful and colorful. It's time to see if this home cook can get their head in the game. David. David's dish looks beautiful, so I'm going to go ahead and give him credit for that, but you know what? I am the top dog from Vegas. David's finally starting to step up his game, but he has a long way to go to catch up with me. What is it? A uh, tandoori spiced black cod on some red quinoa and a chickpea puree. It looks beautiful. The contrasting of the colors are amazing. Black cod, very difficult to cook. You seasoned it with what? Uh, salt, pepper, and tandoori spice. And then I cooked it in a red wine reduction with a little shallots, and then um, braised it with some butter. 
um, the cast moist, it's glistening, and it's packed with flavour. Another little spice, that kick, fresh chickpea, a tad overcooked, but it's not easy to get right. I mean, there's a weird dichotomy going on with you, because the moodier you are, the better you cook. I think it's one of the best dishes you've cooked in this competition. Thank you, chef. Wow, that's delicious. I mean, look how juicy it is. I mean, that that's cooked perfectly. And that's what we're looking for in fish. As long as I'm here, this is the expectation. You gotta hit that every single time. Yes, chef. Congratulations. Thank you, chef. All right, David. It didn't seem like you were feeling this challenge at all. What happened? I just felt in previous challenges, I really gave it my all and did not get any recognition. If I gave my all and it wasn't worthy of top three, why am I here? I love the acidity from those beautiful pink radish. They're delicious in flavor. Played. It's so delicate, it's so fine dining. To be a great chef, you have to be really great at failure. Because we're gonna keep pushing you, we're probably gonna make you miserable until we get something like this out of you. And look at what you got. Dude, you gotta be proud of this dish. This is who you are, and that's why you're standing up here. Thank you. Good job, David. The second dish that we want to examine further. This one cook used two tricky proteins beautifully on their dish. And it's definitely a restaurant-worthy plate. I can see you smiling all the way back there, Sean! I brought this dish. I completely brought Vegas to the MasterChef kitchen, and now I got confirmation from the judges. You can't beat that. It's the best feeling ever. Wow. Awesome. Describe it for me. What we have is a red wine braised lamb, Bonivon seasoned black cod, and then I did a balsamic reduction and those beautiful little baby tomatoes. What did you braise the lamb belly with? First, I seared off some shallots and some garlic. I seasoned it with some Bonivon, and then I seared it real quick just to get a nice crisp exterior on the outside. Oh. When it hits your mouth, it just melts away. And that's what a really nice braised lamb belly should do. Now, how'd you cook this cod? I just seasoned it with Vaudevon salt and pepper and seared it on one side and 30 seconds on the other. Oh, it's really good. It's cooked beautifully. Tasting this dish shows that you're front running for a reason. Very nice job. I'm here to compete, chef. All right. <laughs> this looks beautiful. Why the cod and the lamb? Um, I wanted to get a play on luscious lamb and beautiful cod. You know, music and DJ and you're mixing, you're blending. Every night is different, right? With food, you're mixing, you're blending as well. Here's the thing. I mean, it shouldn't work together, but it does. It's almost like the perfect lamb. Fish still glistening. And that, for me, shows the flair is cooked beautifully. Maybe a touch of heat in that puree. Okay. But this is MasterChef cooking at its absolute best. Thank you, Chef. The third dish we'd like to take a closer look at. This home cook has really stepped up out of her comfort zone. The plate looks beautiful. I proudly serve it in any one of my restaurants. Please step forward. Brandy. Brandy. I'm right up here with the Vegas boys. Of course they're going to be called up here. But me, a fifth grade elementary teacher from Irvington, Kentucky, who would have figured? So Brandy, walk me through all the components to your dish. I cooked a seared tandoori black cod over sauteed mustard greens, sauteed my octopus in my pressure cooker, and the squash blossoms, I stuffed the fresh hummus. The only ingredient under there that I've actually used before is tomatoes. Wow, so everything here is new to you. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at that. It's absolutely juicy. How's it taste? It tastes fantastic. The fish is beautiful. The squash blossoms are probably my favorite, but the octopus. I wish it was a little bit softer in the texture. Otherwise, it's a fantastic dish. Thank, Thank you. you. It's bloody good. You've got everything there. All the elements to compose a beautiful dish. Octopus near perfect. The squash one, you've nailed it. And how fascinating is this, that two of the guys standing behind you are from Vegas, and your plating is on par with their dishes. Great job. Thank you, Thank you dish. Chef. <laughs> I mean, three amazing dishes. Where do we go? I mean, all three are best. The winner of this very unique mystery box challenge, the person who will receive a game-changing advantage. Congratulations. The winner of this high-end mystery box challenge the person who will receive a game-changing advantage. Congratulations. 
Sure. Okay. We're going to the pantry. Find out your advantage. All right. I knocked that one out of the park today. Great job, brother. Thank you very much, sir. You did a great job. Thank you. It's a great feeling to win the mystery box you're supposed to win. This means I'm the front runner. I'm the one that everybody's gunning after and everybody has to catch up to. And now I get my advantage. Congratulations on that amazing winning dish. Top eight, Sean. Yes, thank you very How much. How does that feel? <laughs> I've got goosebumps. All right, Sean, down to business. You have the opportunity to select what everyone else is going to have to cook tonight. Nice. Now it's time to see what the home cooks can do with a particular ingredient. But two sides of the spectrum, from high end to low end. It's the number one most consumed fish in America. All right. That's beautiful. Now, this extraordinary fish is a chef's dream, but it takes real skill, patience, stellar technique to get it just right. I grew up eating a slightly less exciting form of salad. <laughs> oh, man. Canned salmon. Mmm, delicious. Watch and learn. This is something I mastered in Paris, Sean. <laughs> it is all in the wrist. <laughs> the challenge with a canned salmon like this is how in the hell you elevate it. Yeah. Me, it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> but here's where it gets interesting. All the home cooks need to give us a restaurant quality dish to stay in the competition. But only four home cooks will be working with this beautiful, expensive salmon. On the other side, four home cooks tonight have to crack open a can of salmon. Sean, it's up to you to decide who does what. Do you have a strategy? I do, Chef. Last time I wanted to cut the fat. I wanted to get rid of the weaker people. My game plan this time is to go after the heavy hitters. So the people that worked with finer ingredients are getting that can. Let's go for Nathan. He's not going to be able to handle that whole salmon. I think he's going to butcher the right So now. Nathan, whole salmon. Dan. I'm going to put Dan with the can. Excellent. Eric. I'm going to give Eric the better ingredient because I don't fear him. Oh, he's got the salad. Tenoria. So I'm going to put Tenoria with the can. Terry. Terry's going to the can. Wow. Katie. The whole salmon. Left, we got Brendy and David, two feisty competitors. I think one of them's going to have a major hard time breaking down that fish. I'm going to piss him off. I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. I like the view, Chef. As you can see, Sean does not have to cook in tonight's elimination challenge. For Sean's second advantage, he has to choose what everyone else has to cook with tonight. Two versions of a single very popular protein, but in two very different forms. Now, it's time to find out which version of this particular protein Sean's chosen for each of you. And the answer, guys, back there in the pantry. <laughs> smiling way too much. All right, everyone's gonna have one hour to make us a restaurant quality dish. Your 60 minutes starts now. A farm. Go. Please don't hit me over. Go, 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 go. I got a can. Can? All right. Nice big salmon here. I got a can. Hey, mister. <laughs> I have never cut up a fish this big before. Seeing as how there's no ocean in Kentucky, the only fresh salmon that I've worked with are fillets that have already been cut up and are ready to go into the skillet. Ew. Canned salmon? Woo! Good. The fact that Sean gave me the canned salmon shows that Sean thinks I'm a threat. After seeing the dish I produced in the mystery box, he's worried. <laughs> Inspired salmon with a very celery bok choy puree. It's going to be beautiful colors, lots of flavors. This isn't something we exactly do at the firehouse. Most of the fish that we get is prepared, so this is definitely a new thing for me. I got the canned salmon, and I'm a little disappointed. Um, I grew up in North Carolina, so I'm making my take on a classic southern dish, uh, salmon croquettes. I'm making my own tartar sauce right now. I'm also going to make salmon hush puppies. Mm, that's really good. Um, today I'm making a pan seared salmon with grilled asparagus and a garlic dill sauce that goes over it. In Zambia we have a big fish like this called the Yalelo, but I've never done this before and I'm extremely nervous. Mm. Here, please help me with this salmon. 
Now, Tristan, come on, we know how exciting they look when you <laughs> see them enter onto that marble in that kitchen first thing in the morning. To do it perfectly is really something that you got to perfect over time. It doesn't happen overnight. So it's going to be exciting to see that, one, everyone scales it. Two, fillets are nice and clean. It doesn't hack it up. Three, remembers to pin bone it all. And four, portion it properly. I gotta say, guys, I know everyone's looking at the canned salmon as though they're at a disadvantage, but timing-wise, three twists of the wrist, and you've got that salmon at your fingertips. The one thing to keep in mind tonight, though, is we're looking for something high-end. Salmon, salmon, salmon! Everybody loves salmon! Now, Eric, it looks like that salmon's just been pulled from a bear's mouth. So the salmon went over. That is not looking good. Terry, how are we doing? Good, Jeff. Canned salmon. What are you doing? Today I'm going to make a salmon broth, bread crisp with some nice Julian vegetables to dip it in. Then I'm going to put a side of fish cakes. Dry thyme in there? Uh, yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. of thyme. How'd you get this into something must chef worthy? It's going to have to just be the colors and the way that I put it on a plate. He you wants your hand. You yes, yes. go. Just keep yourself in the competition. Come on. Yes, you can sir. do this. Yes, sir. Like that in, huh? All right, Brandy. Hello. Why do you think Sean gave you this fish? He probably figured I'd be more comfortable with the canned salmon because that's something you can get at a grocery store in Kentucky, and a fresh salmon is not. What's the dish? I am making a castern salmon, a spinach puree at the bottom. I've got some roasted little cherry heirloom tomatoes okay. and a peach slaw on top. Okay. Awesome, Brandy. Keep going. Good Thank luck. you. David. Yes, Chef. Tell me about the dish. I'm making pressure cooker risotto with uh, arborio rice, a little canned salmon, peas, and asparagus. I understand you play poker. There's a gamble, cooking risotto and a pressure cooker. Why do that now? I'm definitely taking a big risk, but that's why I'm here. All right. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Let's go, guys. Ten minutes to go. Stop the clock. All of you, look at me now. I've got some very important news. Sean has another big advantage right now. You have the power to bring somebody up the balcony and put them in. It's up eight. Um... Ten minutes to go. Stop the clock. All of you, look at me now. I've got some very important news. Sean has another big advantage right now. You have the power to bring somebody up the balcony and put them in the top eight. Um, uh, I'm gonna stay there. You wanna take the pass or not? Okay, get on up there. I'm saving Eric because I don't find Eric to be a major threat to me at this point. Thank you, buddy. There you are. Clock starts again, guys. Less than 10 minutes to go. Tonight's definitely the night to go after the big dogs. I'm going after Terry. I'm going after David. I'm going after Brandy. I'm going after Tenorio. How are you feeling, Terry? Feeling good, Sean. So, Tenorio, what do you have here? Yeah, this is going to be salmon two ways. I'm going to have the fried salmon patty. I'm going to have the poached salmon pavachu with some crispy potatoes to get that texture. When was the last time you saw a poached pate shoe? Um, I've never seen it. There's a reason why I've never seen it, because there's no such thing. Have you got time to do that? I sure hope so. Good luck, Tenorio. Thank you, Chef. Poached salmon pate shoe. Let's go, guys. Last two minutes. I think it's going to be interesting to see what Terry does. You know, to see him elevate that and do something with five? I don't want it to look like a clumsy appetizer. That's my only thing. Now, David, I've never seen a result so cooked in a pressure cooker. There's also need to be stirred. Yeah. Last minute. Come on. Make those dishes shine. Ten, nine, nine eight, 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 seven, seven six, six, five, four, three, two, two one. Stop hands in the air. First up, Brandy. Go, Brandy. I've never filleted a whole salmon before. I've never seen a whole salmon before. Uh, but I've made a beautiful dish, and I think the judges are going to be super impressed. Describe the dish, please. I have a seared salmon with apricot balsamic glaze, salmon stock spinach puree, and a peach slaw. I think Sean thought I might have had a little bit of trouble butchering the fish because you can't get fresh salmon where I live. There's no ocean in Kentucky, so. <laughs> Why the slaw? I wanted a crispiness to the dish. I like a lot of different textures and flavors. Beauty cooked. Pink in the middle, skin crispy. Slaw, delicious. Lovely gastric. You know, we may poke fun at the accent and you've got no electricity and you pee out in the garden, you don't have a bathroom. <laughs> but I have three bathroom chips. Outside? No, in the house. Oh, inside. With plumbing. <laughs> but for me, you're a dark horse that's running very fast. I just wish everybody behind you could taste this. Because if they could, 
that start shuffling their knives. Great job. Thank you, Chef. The flavor's fantastic. The fish is cooked nicely. The pink salmon, the stone fruit, and the cabbage. There's not just layered flavor, but a dimension of flavor. Would your fifth graders be proud of this? They would be amazed at this. The acidity in there, the sweetness in there, that thought process is not fifth grade. That's Master Chef. Thank you, Chef. John definitely thought I was not going to be able to handle this fish. He wants to get the good competition out of here, but he failed to do that tonight. Terry, please, let's go. Back home in Long Island, I'm very used to cod, I'm used to halibut. I've never really worked with canned salmon before, so it's really stepping out of my comfort zone. But I have to tell you, I'm still very happy with the result. Terry, describe your uh, dish, please. Well, I made salmon and roasted red pepper cakes on a bed of dill, aioli. I also have a baked salmon and dill crostini. He bakes it? Yes, sir. I just put some heat into it and melt all the flavors. Terry, you're a talented cook, but, um... He bakes it? Yes, Chef. I just put some heat into it to melt all the flavors. Terry, you're a talented cook, but, um... It's dreadful. to taste it what's the first thing that comes to mind straight on the end of the tongue but that's it i don't um, time I mean, I... you don't put time with salmon and why would you bake canned salmon you don't bake that it's already cooked you're just drying out they're like hockey pucks my palate's on fire i've got time running all over the place this has been your worst performance in this competition it's almost like you've gone backwards with this dish flavor of both are fine. The dill sauce underneath the cakes is nice. The salmon cakes themselves are a little dry and you're using something canned. Everything else you should be fresh to help lighten it and brighten it. And I think that that dill sauce at the bottom actually does help. But it feels like you took a can of salmon out in your home kitchen and you were just making something for an afternoon snack. You didn't give us what you were asking for. Right, next up, the one that we've all been dying to taste. Can't quite believe he cooked a risotto in a pressure cooker. David. Cooking risotto in a pressure cooker is risky, but being a poker player, I know, sometimes you're gonna take big risk for big rewards. And I'm very confident this risotto is great. Describe the dish, David. For you today, I have a salmon risotto garnished with some asparagus, peas, fresh tarragon, and a dollop of creme fraiche. You know, risottos need to be nursed and attended to, and it's delayed and stop every time so the rice doesn't lose its texture and explode, and it's zero to 22, 23 minutes non-stop stirring. You can't fast track it, so why pressure cooker? I found that I was able to achieve risotto that was the same quality of the risotto I made without a pressure cooker, and actually, it gave me a little more time to do other things at the same time also. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty much lost words. This tastes good. It shouldn't work, but it does. I love what you've done with the salmon flaking in there. I can taste the oil. So it feels like it's not from a can. The can was to get one foot out the door. You've got both feet firmly in this competition. Great job. Thank you, Chef. So my biggest concern was it wasn't a salmon dish, that it was a rice dish. But you overcome that. It tastes like salmon, and you nailed it. Nice job. Thank you, Chef. Sean gave me canned salmon because he wants to send me back to Vegas. All he did was allow me to impress the judges once again. Woo! I took a risk tonight and it paid off in spades. Right, next up, Casey, let's go. I have a seared salmon over a bed of lentils, a celery root puree, and also a carrot puree. Salmon's delicious. Thank you, Chef. Salmon cooked beautifully, then the purees are delicious. The block of lentils underneath, terrible. It's like mush. But you did the best bit and the hardest bit beautifully. Good job. Thank you, well Dan. Dan. Go, Dan! I got canned salmon. So I did bacon jalapeno salmon croquettes with a made from scratch tartar sauce along with parsley and three urban crusted salmon hush puppies. All in all. It tastes great. I think the sauce is fantastic. I love the croquette. I love the heat. Thank you. The one thing that needs to go is this. Sorry about that, Chef. 
Next up, Nathan. Go, Nathan. Woo. I have a pan seared lemon dill salmon, a purple cauliflower couscous, sauteed asparagus, and summer squash topped with green peas. All right, now the salmon. I'd say it's a little overcooked. You can see how it's starting to flake there a little, but it's very well seasoned. I think you've got a lot of texture on the plate, which is great. You probably have two or three good ideas in a dish where we only needed one good idea. Yes, chef. Overall, it's job. Good job, Nathan. Last up, Tenoria. I've been doing a lot of Southern comfort food in this competition, and I'm really hoping that judges notice that I'm trying something outside my box and that they appreciate that today. All right, let's go to the dish, please. I have for you a crispy salmon croquette, as well as a salmon quenelle with a crispy potato, all on top of a lemon Dijon sauce. Tenoria, I really like you because of what you stand for, what you bring to this competition. Mm -hmm. That is one of the worst plates you've ever seen. It looks terrible. <laughs> Sonora, that is one of the worst plates you've ever seen. It looks terrible. Hmm. What's the seasoning in here? Inside of the canned salmon croquette, there is some sauteed shallots and garlic, obey, and chives. Notice. I need more salt in them. I wish that was the only thing needed was salt. It's not cooked. It's gooey. It's almost like a sort of unwanted fish cake. That does not feel or look anything like you've ever cooked. Sean sure put a big target on your back and it's a direct hit. It'd be sad to see you go. Agreed. I didn't come here to go home at number nine. I like that big different textures. I like that you made the shoe pastry for the salmon canal. There are some big downs flavor-wise, because I know you know how to make food that tastes better. But overall, I just wish I saw more from you yeah. tonight. It's definitely one of the worst. Thank you. I definitely think that I had an impact on this competition. So guys, so this is a tough one. I may have taken out not one, but two of our heavy hitters. As you guys know, this is an elimination challenge. At least one of you will be going home tonight. But first, the good news. The two standout dishes of the night, congratulations, David and Brandon. Nice job, David. Now, unfortunately, I have to deliver the bad news. If I say your name, please come down to the front. Tenoria. And Terry. Tenoria, you know, you've come into this competition, delivered flavors that we, we haven't seen before. But what you did tonight was badly executed. Terry, you've never been in the bottom. You cook brilliantly. However, tonight, you completely misinterpreted the challenge. Both of you were given canned salmon tonight. Sean put a big target on your back. One of you two is leaving the Master Chef kitchen. This is tough. Um, Tenoria. Yes, Chef. Head back to your station. Thank you, Chef. Terry, one of the most lovable, fun, passionate contestants we've ever had in this competition. I look at you, and I don't see a handyman. I see a chef. Without a doubt. To be a part of all this is just something that is just priceless. And I just thank you guys for everything. Terry, you're going to be missed. Thank you, Chef. Please, go up here and say goodbye. This has been an absolutely amazing journey. Terry. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. I'm a handyman from New York, but I got to cook for some of the most amazing chefs in the world. It is a piece of art. It's one of the best pies I've ever seen in this competition ever. 
the opportunity that Master Chef has given me. I need 27 scallops, guys. It has just changed the way that I look at food and cooking in general. It's broadened my eyes to the fact that my cooking is something that can be enjoyed by the masses. It shows everything we were looking for. Technique, flavor, potential. And now I'm ready to show the world what Terry's got. Thanks, Terry. Next time. Be afraid. Be very afraid. So scared. It's a triple threat challenge. Three pressure tests. Are you kidding me? On oil. With three times the tension. <laughs> That's not good. Oh, man. Three times the drama. I don't like... It's a raw potato. And three times the pressure. It's one strike. That's a tiny cook to Two strikes? What's she doing? Three strikes are out. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my God